welcome back, adventurers. Today we are digging up the past of Falkovnia and trying to find a way to save its future. The history of Falkovnia and its people starts with the Silver Kingdom's era. In that time there were 12 realms, whose great standards bore multitudes of the founding spirits, like the domains of the lion, bear and the falcon. The Silver Kingdom's era was a time when the world was vastly different prior to the coming of the mists. The Silver Falcon Kingdom was a collection of idyllic vistas that loosely conformed to the topography of the modern Falkovnia. Cities gleaming with white and gold dotted the landscape of this idealized proto-Falkovnia, and records of treaties and diplomacy among the Silver Kingdom's assorted races reveal tradition of peace, equality, and goodwill entirely absent in modern Falkovnia. In addition, most sources during this period refer to a beloved king, Gutefalk, noted for his justice, mercy, and wisdom. This nebulous utopian period ended with what historians dubbed the Crimson Storm. It lasted for many days until the Twelve Silver Kings held a council to determine the root of its problem. At midnight, as the Crimson Storm's fury reached its height, the vast celestial Silver Hawk, the founding spirit of Falkovnia, appeared high above the countryside. It was locked in a mortal combat with another hawk, this one red and infernal. In the end, both spirits fell in a silver and crimson blaze, crashing into the citadel where the Silver Kings watched. And then, the storm broke, and the mists rolled in. Following the cataclysm, the people of Falkovnia found themselves cut off from the rest of the Silver Kingdoms, adrift in an ocean of mist. With their king dead, numerous warlords sprang up, each stoking a claim to the Falkovnia's throne. Their battles quickly degenerated into barbarism, killing and pillaging. This time of unrestrained bloodshed is called the Arrow of Bloodied Steel, and it ended with the reign of the cruel Panoply. The queen united Falkovnia under her banner with the use of her demonic armor, willingly dealing with the horse of the mists. She was the first ruler to reinstate state-sponsored slavery, focused mainly on the land's demi-human races. This situation continued until the abrupt disappearance of the demon queen and the rise of the wizard king, Falcon the Great. Falcon's reign was chiefly characterized by his successful efforts to develop Falkovnia's military prowess. Except for this accomplishment and his interest in gladiatorial sports, Lila marks the reign of Falcon the Great until the emergence of the mercenary king, known as the Hawk of Vlad Drakov. When he first appeared late in the year 689, Vlad Drakov was the leader of the band of the Outlander mercenaries, known as the Talons of the Hawk. Traveling from beyond the mists, Drakov's group arrived in Darkon, where their first act consisted of brutal massacres in its villages. He, of course, made a mistake, as the vengeful undead shells of the sword ultimately rose and drove Drakov and his Talons into the mists. Supposedly, once within the mists, Drakov regrouped his men and hatched a plan to fulfill their collective dreams. Vlad Drakov's capture of the Falkonian throne came about with the infamous Bloody Raid, his only successful military endeavor to date. Leading the towns of the Hawk south out of the Draconian wilderness, Drakov rode into the car, where he faced down Falcon the Great in the throne room of the Wizard King's castle. By the time Falkovnia appeared at Darkon's southern border in 690 BC, Drakov had apparently ruled the domain for several years melting in the land to his whims and building a vast and loyal military government, complete with a fanatical inner circle of generals and cowed population. Continual strife, directed both inward and outward foes, marks the reign of the mercenary king. The first of these conflicts occurred in 691, during the first years of Drakov's reign, and was dubbed as the Years of Impaled Rats. A new thief's guild arose, while, coincidentally, an unexpected plague of were-rats afflicted the sewers of Silbervas. Drakov ordered a purge, relocating to his summer palace in Silbervas in order to lead his troops personally against his threats. Three years of intermittent combat passed before Drakov slew the leader of the both groups, a lycanthrope known as the Claude. Following the retreat of the lycanthropes, Drakov turned his hunger for power and respect towards his neighbors. In 695 Brovan calendar, Falkonian troops crossed the border into Lamordia. Fortunately for the realm, Drakov's troops were unprepared for neither the extraordinarily harsh winter that blasted Lamordia that year, nor the superior weaponry of the blunderbuss wielding Lamordian border guard. The effect of the so-called winter war proved to be short-lived. In 703, Drakov and one Obrakar forged a treaty, ensuring a non-aggression on the part of Falkovnia in exchange for martial supplies from Lamordia. Following the winter war, Drakov again attempted to invade a neighboring country. In 700 BC, Falkovnia went to war with the larger kingdom of Darkon, marking the start of the series of the wars known as the Dead Man's Campaign. Drakov launched the first Dead Man's War with his armies positioned at the Forest of Shadows. Hordes of undead met the initial thrust of the Falkovnian invaders, easily pushing back Drakov's troops. 
Even as Falkovian soldiers fell before the zombie army, their corpses rose up to attack their countrymen. Drakov, accustomed to battling mortal foes, poured more resources into the war. In the spring of 701, Drakov was pushed back by the undead force establishing his hatred towards his northern neighbor. Revitalized and equipped with Lamorian ornaments, Drakov ordered a second assault on Darkon in 704. Undead forces again met the Falkovian army, this time within minutes of crossing the Darkonian border. Though better prepared, the Falkonians still fell before the undead opposition. A hasty retreat followed. Desiring to prove himself, Drakov's avaricious eye fell briefly upon his southern neighbors. In 705, Drakov sent a small force into Borka, the land of Kamil Baritsi, believing the domain presented easy pickings. A single member of the expeditionary force returned, stumbling back to Drasipetri, bloated, trembling, and purple flashed from an exotic poison, before lapsing into a stinking pool of dung before the mercenary king. Following the appearance of Dementlu in 707 Barovian calendar, Drakov ordered the annexation of the new territory. Unsurprisingly, the Volkolian military proved ill-equipped for the task. After a successful initial drive into the heart of Dementlu, the Falconian army crumbled before the superior weaponry, including gunpowder weapons such as muskets and cannons of the enemy forces. After the Widow's massacre and the Dementluvian annexation, Drakov returned to his campaign against Darkon. In 711 Barovian calendar, Falconian soldiers attempted to breach Darkon's borders, only to be turned back by the undead. As a result, Drakov entered the longest planning phase of the Dead Man's campaign, lasting for a decade. While preparing his next move against Darkon, Vlad Drakov initiated losing conflicts with Rich Milu and Guyana. During the Borderlands War of 716, he faced off against the citizenry of Rich Milu, led by the famous and powerful Rainier clan. Following the appearance of the Gehenna's Waste, Drakov sought to overthrow this brutal theocracy and annex its lands in 719's Starving March. Attempting to cross the Balanox into central Gehenna, the Falconians were rebuffed by the combined forces of twisted humanoids that dwelt in the mountains strategically positioned priest of Jakarta, and strange beasts that decimated entire units. Mass starvation further depleted Falconia's forces. The final conflict of the Dead Man's campaign came in 722. Having amassed more troops than ever before, the Falconian war machine pressed into Darkon, once more clashing with undead hordes. Despite years of planning, Draco's forces failed yet again. Save for the executioner's campaign against the Metlu and Rich Meloy of 724 and the Gold Claw Massacre of 727 in Darvinia, Vlad Drakov has focused his attentions internally, indulging his sadistic tendencies within his own borders. Following the Requiem, however, Drakov seized the opportunity created by the vacuum of power in Necropolis, invading the much-changed domain a mere two months after the fateful winter solstice. The Falconian forces came within the sight of the Nartok, but they were soon rebuffed by the awakened and dead of Necropolis. Since 751, Drakov has bided his time. Undoubtedly, the aging warlord plans another attempt to prove his might in the field of battle. The only question is, which of his neighbors he will choose to invade next? Thank you so much for your time, patient listeners. Falkovnia is a great example of bad people running the show unchecked. So please, if you see any injustice, speak up. And be careful while crossing the mists.